And this is the kind of people that we have to be. And when you look at it, this is a very interesting time of the year. Because a lot of people are, are, are commemorating the, uh, the, the martyrdom of uh, al Haj Malik Shabazz. You see? And he was that type, of, that type of brother who had that kind of concern. You see? You had that concern for the people. They're suffering. Even when he had a chance to be elevated himself or given a position, he could have just took that position, but he didn't. He still had a concern for his people. His fight was for his people. And this was from the son of the prophet, son of Allah, son of But this is how he was. He was offered kingship. He was offered all these things. He turned them down because he wanted the people what? They have the haq. They have the true military Islam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, today we're going to talk about the success. For that, the success. And Allah says in the Quran, The believers must eventually win through. And some translated, the believers have already won. You see? So already Allah says, The believers are successful. We're successful people. We must be successful. Right? But he says, he didn't say the Muslim, he said the Muslim. The believers are successful. You see, the believers, that's something different because these are people who what? They have complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a book in it, guided, sure, without doubt to those who have taqwa. The believer is the one who has taqwa in his heart. He trusts in Allah. His tawakal to Allah. He trusts in Allah. You see? He trusts in Him. And he believes without doubt in Allah's angels. He believes without doubt in all the things that the believer, that Allah says the believer believes. He has no doubt in this. The believer is the one that when he comes to some adversity, he says, ah, this is what Allah and, the, and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had promised us. This is what Allah and his messenger had promised us. You see, this is the believer. Allah says, the believers are successful. Now, but Allah does not stop there because a lot of times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book, his noble book. A lot of times when he tells us about being successful, or he tells us about these things, he then gives us what? Actions. Huh? That characterize the people who have who achieved this success. So he gives them some actions. So what does he say? After he says, he says, And those who come to salah with khashu. Right? The ones who are khushu, the ones who come with focus, come with uh, attentiveness in the salah, who are present, you see, who come with the right attitude to the salah, who come to it with need for it, who come to it looking for nourishment, looking for answers, looking for peace in their heart, you see. So the one who comes with this khushu, this is the beginning of the matter. He could have started with a lot of things, but he started off talking about this khushu. This khushu could, could be a whole cook by, by itself, a whole class by itself. But we'll stick with the basic because we have limited time. So those, in the translation, he says, those who humble themselves in the prayer, who come with a humble heart. Now, when you say humble ourselves in the prayer, we ain't talking about coming, we got our heads down. And, we ain't talking about the heart. Well, the heart is humble because you understand that you're in the presence of the divine, that you are in conversation with your Lord, with the Rabbil Ailami, with the Lord of all the worlds. But he goes further. The next characteristic. He says, and those who stay away from vain talk, from wasteful talk, from talk that is not beneficial at all, from gossip and all this nonsense. Even sometimes we get caught in negative conversation and we spend a long time. Sometimes these things are distractions. This is a, a sense of distraction that gets us off course. It can happen to any of us, especially in this new age of social media. It's easy for it to happen. You see, you're having a good discussion, and then all of a sudden someone leads you in an entire different direction. Discussion turns to a whole, a whole other thing, a whole other paradigm. You see? So he said, those who stay away from negative talk, this vain talk, this wasteful talk, that derives no benefit, whether through Benefit through achieving dunya or benefit through achieving the akhirah. No benefit coming from the conversation. Those who stay away from that. You see? 
And I remember one time one of my sheikhs, he told me, he said, City Ismail, he said, always speak the language of victory because words are like duas. You see? So speak the language of victory. This is your dhikr you, you, you're saying every day. You see? Listen to what Rasul said, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, for those who believe in Allah in the last day, either speak good or be what? Silent. <laughs> huh? Speak good or be silent. And Allah just described this type of conversation as being the thing that the people says, says stay away from. And the next thing he says, zakati fa'ilun. And those who pay what? The zakah. Huh? In this case, the Mupasiru talks about this ayat referring to zakah, the community zakah, the one of the five pillars. We know that Rasul Sallallahu talked about the zakah being an obligation. You see, and that's a no whole nother uh, subject in itself. But the establishment of zakah, because zakah <coughs> purifies the wealth. It's, it's the zakah, the word itself means purification. In, in, in the Quranic context, it means to purify the wealth. We purify by giving a certain portion of our wealth once a year. You see, a certain portion if we meet the minimum. This is a purification. It's not just an individual purification. But when a community does it, it's a collective communal purification because it allows balance in the community. It allows the people that may have to be able to disperse and make that wealth circulate in the community so that the have-nots can have a little wealth and, and have an opportunity to change their lives. So the wealth circulates in the community healthily. Because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, what, he said, what is unity? Unity is what? The missing of blood through marriage and the sharing of wealth. The sharing of wealth. These are things that are tangible and real. So Allah tells you, the successful ones are those who give a portion of their wealth. I once heard Imam Jamil Al-Amin, Hafiz of Allah, may Allah protect him. I once, him. I once heard him say, if a man is not willing to give his money, you know he's not willing to give his life. If he won't give his money, if he's not generous with his money, you know he's not going to give his life. And then I read in the, in the Shifa of Qadi Ayyad, where the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he connected courage with generosity. The two go hand in hand, you see? So Allah says, those who give the charity. And this, these things I'm telling you are for those who want success. This is for the successful people. Then Allah says, And those who abstain from Illegal sex. Look at our community. Look at our community. You see, you see people talking about the black community and them empowering and these type of things, right? How are we going to empower if we don't solve the problem of 73% 73, 73 of our children being born out of wedlock, being born to Zena? And Allah says in another verse of Quran, La takrofu zina. Stay away from fornication and adultery. It opens the door to many evils. Now we have kids, 73% of our, our families, but children being born out of wedlock. How can there be empowerment like this? How is that possible? This means that we have to clean up our family situation. We have to clean our family situation up. You see? What did the message of Allah say? Unity is the mixing of blood through marriage and the sharing of wealth. Marriage what? Marriage makes what? Produces halal children. And now you have the possibility of building something. You can't build a foundation of a community based on the haram. You can't have a whole community of people being born out of wedlock and think, that you're gonna build something righteous? No, you can't have that. When Allah done indicated it almost so many times in Quran, the disgrace and the wrath that is upon this act. And we continue this. So that's the first thing that we have to do. We have to do what? We have to understand how to what? How to build a lineage, how to maintain a lineage, and how to preserve a lineage. And that's done through family. To establishing family. For the successful now, even the Kafirun in their research, they've done, they've connected, right, poverty 
with broken homes. There's a connection between the, the poverty, the people who are in poverty, and having broken homes. Because when you come out of a situation of haram, then it, it, it increases your chances of not having success. And Allah tells you this. Stay away from illegal sexual intercourse. Except for those who are joined to you in marriage. And in Islam, Islam makes it fairly easy to get married. You see, and that's another issue. We don't, we don't just want to get married, we want to stay married. As I travel up and down the East Coast, I go to some of the bigger places where the Muslims are pretty large communities. And they have to evolve and door marriages. I give a talk in January, I see a brother, family meet his family. I go back in August, another whole family. This is what's going on. There's something wrong with that. You can't build a stable community with evolving door marriages. You can't do it. Not when, not when the majority of your community is doing this. No, you can't build nothing with that. You see? Family has to be stable. Family has to be stable. And this produces a different type of community, a different people. To be successful, Allah goes further. Look, listen, he he, Allah, Allah spends three hours talking about this subject. He don't stop there. He says, but those who desire exceed the limits are transgressors. Those who, listen, he said, those who exceed the limit of going out and having women is not your wife, or having men is not your husband. Those who exceed the limit, Allah said what? They are fasikun. They are transgressors. They're transgressing the bounds. So how can any battle call? How can battle call the wild come in that situation? What are we teaching our children? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, get them married. Get them married soon after, soon after they reach puberty. Soon after they reach adulthood. We tell them, no, 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 just wait till you're 30. The lizard hole. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, we follow the akhli kitab into the hole of the lizard if we could. The lizard hole. They say get married 30, we get married 30. They say wait till you finish college, we wait till we finish college. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're walking around here with girlfriends. Shane, got to hide from the brother when we're with our girlfriend. Got to hide from the community. They say, you know, you don't see so-and-so. You don't see uh, uh, Brother Abdul, you don't see him for um, two, three weeks. Why? He got to spend time with his girl. He can't bring the girl around the community. He ain't married to her. You see, same thing go with the, with the women. That's what happens when we don't follow the instructions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we follow other than what he has given us. You see? It doesn't mean we rush out here and marry our children to anybody. But at the same time, we start looking into this thing seriously. You see? And part of the problem with our marriage situation, our family situation, is the way now that people live, especially the Muslims. Like when you look at Europe, you go to Europe, the Muslims, they live together. So there might have been, Abdullah over there might have been across the street from you for 30 years. So you know little Abdullah growing up. So you take your daughter over there to marry little Abdullah, you don't have to do as much research because y'all been praying the same master in. You've been dealing with the same family for Eve for all these years. But the way that we're living now, we're so separated in our lifestyle, in our living, that we, we might see each other at Juma, and that's it. We might see each other at the Eve, once a year. At Ramadan. So our children are not coming up knowing each other. In the age of social media and cell phones, even if we live far, we have no excuse not to communicate with each other. If me and a brother are real tight and we would come through the years together, we should be able to talk at least at least once a week with a new cell phone. It's free. No cost is nothing. In the old days, we were long distance call. Ain't a long distance call anymore. And that's how we keep the bond. If I'm talking to my brother Yusuf and he got a child my child's age and we're talking constantly, we know each other, we keep it up with the development of our children, then we can put, put our children in a situation where they can marry one another. This marriage thing is serious. Because a lot of our young people are falling into the same errors that we had as Muslims. And we did, they're doing the things that we did in Jahiliya as Muslims. You see? We've got to do a better job if we want to be among the successful. Individually 
and collectively.